Hey, this is Horner and this is 2009 AP Physics B free response question number one, worth 15 points. And we've got a spring that's attached to a mass and then just to a little block on the bottom that doesn't have any mass, neither does the spring. And we compress it when we let go, bonk, it pops up really high. So it's kind of a popping type toy. They want us to figure out how high it will go. So they want to know H and they want us only to solve this in terms of the mass, the uh, compression, and the spring constant and then any other fundamental constants that we can think of. So when we do this, we need to probably start with just thinking about energy. And at the bottom, we know that the energy it has is potential energy to a spring. And at the top, the energy it has is potential energy due to gravity. So um, the question is, does it have any kinetic energy? Well, if we think about it right here, the velocity before it takes off is zero. And at the top, where it stops, the velocity is, uh, the final velocity here is also zero. So if we call these original and final, we'd see that those are both zero. Remember for a spring, our potential energy is equal to one half kx squared. And for potential energy due to gravity is just mgh. And so we really have everything we need. We can go ahead and write the expression mgh. So that's where we end up is equal to 1 half kx squared. And they want us now to solve this in terms of h. So we're just going to move the m and the g to the other side. So now we're going to have kx squared on the top. And on the bottom, we're going to have m, g, uh, and then we'll have 2. So we'll put the 2 out front. Uh, so we've got kx squared over 2mg. And you actually get three points for that. Um, you get one point for kind of showing what's going on here. You might say energy, uh, energy is conserved, but I think they might give it to you for just having this expression. Um, so now you have the correct expression. You have it rewritten for H because it does say find this for H. If you just left it this way, you won't get all the points. And you get a point for either saying energy is conserved or trying to show all this up top. Most likely, if you uh, want the point for showing all this, you're going to have to say uh, that the kinetic energy original plus the original gravitational energy plus the original spring energy is equal to the final kinetic energy plus the um, final gravitational potential energy plus the final spring energy. So, oops, got to put an F on that one. And that would give you full points too. For the next part of this problem, uh, they want us to, in part B, uh, it says what quantity needs to be grasped so that the slope of the best fit line through the data points can be used to calculate the spring constant k. So we really need to rewrite our equation again. So we said h is equal to k x squared all over 2 mg. And they told us that um, the spring is always compressed the same. So this is a constant. So we're going to put c. k is a constant. Gravity is a constant. So the only things that are going to change are going to be h and mg. And they want us to know what quantity should be graphed. And so what we're going to do here is let's just say we want to plot h versus, and then if we get rid of the k, the x squared, the 2, and the g, notice that that's h is proportional to 1 over m. And so that should give us a straight line. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, 1 over m versus h. And those are the two things that will give us that straight line. Uh, so it's fill in one or both of the blank columns of the table with the quantities, including units. So we're going to say this is 1 over mass, which would be 1 over a kilogram. Or you could write a kilogram to the negative 1. So you could do either of those. Uh, and they mean essentially the same thing. So now we need to fill in these boxes. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the key that I've got. So it's 50. 1 over 0.03 is 33. 1 over 0.04 is 25. 1 over 0.05 is 20. And then finally, 1 over 0.06 is going to be 17. So now that we've done that, we're going to earn a couple more points. So you actually get um, two points. You get one point in this part of the problem. So this is part double I. So B part uh, two, 
you get one point for having all these values, and you get one point for the right label and the right unit. So you got to make sure you do that. Uh, for this one, you also get um, you get uh, two points. You get one point for this, and then one point for just saying the statement. It's one over mass versus the height. Now, so we'll pause this and come back. All right, sorry about the glitch there. We're back, and now they want us to go ahead and plot all of our data. So to plot the data, we've got to put our points on the graph. So one of the points that you get for this is just uh, making sure that you know where your axes should be and that you've labeled them correctly. So this is the height. It's in meters. We're going to make this 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. We are going to make this 0, and we're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and these are all 1 over m, which is a kilogram to the negative 1. So we're plotting height versus 1 over m because that's kind of what our equation says. Um, remember, our equation is h uh, is um, equal to, and then we had kx squared all over 2mg. So we're going to put h over on this side, and we're going to put the 1 over m on this side. Um, and we need to put all of our plot, plotted points in now. So if you go through and put your plotted points in, you've got one that appears about right here. You got another one that appears about right here. You got another kind of arbitrary point that is about, oops, right there. You got another point that occurs about right here. And then finally, you've got a last point that occurs here. Uh, now that we've done that, it says draw a best fit straight line. So when you do this, you want to be really careful that you actually do uh, try to draw the best fit straight line through as many points as you can. Uh, try to get an equal number of points on the top and the bottom, uh, unless it looks kind of funky. This one, I'm trying to use all the points on the bottom. This is kind of an errant point, so we'll leave it off there. But um, I think we've done a pretty good job of trying to figure out where that is. So we've got a couple points on top, we've got a, three points on the bottom, and that's usually what they want to see is a few points on top, few points on bottom, and then you're good. Uh, so now we actually have earned four points for this. Uh, we've correctly labeled both axes, so that was one. We have a scale that's appropriate. There's another point. We've got our dots, that's a point, and we have our best fit line, and that is our last point for that. The next thing they want us to do is to use our best fit line, calculate the number value of the spring constant. So one of the things that we can do is just pick a couple points that would be right on the line and find the slope. So I'm going to pick 0.42 minus 0.1. I'm pulling that off the line. Uh, and then I'm going to divide it by 40. So this is about 0.42. Uh, 40 matches with that 0.42. Um, and then at, uh, at 10, it looks like it's going to be right at 0.1. So I'm going to do 10 here. I probably need to extend my best fit line down a little bit if I wanted to, but we're going to just leave it there. So this is equal to 0.32 meters over 30 kilograms to the negative 1. And if I do that math, I get 1.07 times 10 to the negative 2 and notice my unit here is a meter times a kilogram, because a meter divided by 1 over a kilogram is really just a meter times a kilogram. Um, so now I've got that. The next thing they want us to do is they want us to actually find the value of the spring constant. So if I can, I'm going to grab everything that I've got here. Yeah, I can do this. And I'm going to move it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to move it over. Yeah, let's just move it up here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and delete everything else that we have on the screen. Um, so there's, uh, there's a value that we've got now for the slope. So we can get rid of all this good stuff. And uh, we'll actually also try to get rid of this line. And so we'll delete the line. Uh, let's go back and see what it says. It says uh, we're still trying to find the value of the spring constant. So right now we have the slope. The question is, what is the slope? The slope, if we notice here, is the mass is the uh, height times the mass. So that would be h times m. So we can rewrite this h times m, which is really the slope is equal to k, k x squared all over 2g. And they want us to solve for k. So if we're going to solve for k, 
we've got to change this. We're going to change it to k is equal to, we're going to multiply both sides by 2g, so I've done that. So I've got k is equal to 2g over um, x squared, and then we need to, um, we also need to uh, put in our slope here. Uh, so the slope of the line, notice, is kx squared over 2g kx squared over 2g. So we can actually take 2g times the slope uh, over x squared, and that should give us our value for k. So remember here, we're solving for k. Slope's already on the top. We multiply both sides by 2g, divide by x squared. We end up with this equation. So we're going to do 2 times 10 times our slope, which is 1.07 times 10 to the negative seconds. Uh, and then we're going to divide by x squared and x is 0.02 is what they told us the stretch was squared and when we're done we're going to end up with 535 newtons per meter. The very last thing they want us to do in this problem is they want us to describe a procedure for uh, measuring the height in the experiment, giving the toy is only at that maximum height for just a very 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 small amount of time. Um, so I could use uh, I could use my eyes. So eyeball height uh, max. So I might say height max here or maximum height and measure. So measure using a meter stick. Okay. So now I've described. A procedure for doing that. Uh, I could also say uh, use a video camera uh, and um, uh, a meter stick. So I use camera, a video camera, and a meter stick, and stop motion at the top. So either of these would be fine, they would both give you those two points that you would need, and that is the end of this very lengthy problem.